thank you very much again, Admiral Romel Ong, for, for joining us today. Let's discuss strategy. And before talking about big, grand strategy for the Philippines, which I think both of us agree is no longer a small power, but potentially an emergent, if not already uh, a middle power. Let's talk about the Ayungin Shoal, because you were um, in charge of the Western Command, right, when the Scarborough Shoal crisis uh, happened. So what are the lessons that you learned from back in the day when you were at the forefront of the Philippines' uh, defense of the West Philippine Sea? And and then how how does that inform your understanding what's happening in Ayungin Shoal right now? Okay, clarify ko lang, Richard. No? So for the Scarborough, so Scarborough Shoal, I was the task force commander then. So I was based in Northern Zone. Oh, okay. Northern Zone. Sorry, not Western Command. My apologies for okay. that. Northern... Late, uh, that was when I was uh, younger, no? Uh, relatively younger. And then I was transferred, uh, at some point in my career, I was transferred to Palawan. I became the commander of the Naval Forces West. So that's under the Western Command. This is a Navy component. So Ayung in Shoal was part of my area of responsibility then. So that, those are totally distinct. Because uh, in terms of operational commands, Northern Luzon Command is uh, taking care of the Scar northern Pan part. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kasama is Scarborough Shoal. Then yung uh, Kalayan Island Group for Scratis, Group of Islands, that's under Western Command. So yun muna yung, so, ano, yung so, so, sorry, sorry. So to rephrase it, as someone who served in both Northern and Western Command and has had to deal with both the Panatak Shoal crisis and the Ayungin Shoal crisis, what is your take on the latest developments? My apologies for not properly framing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ang problem natin, we, we are always reacting uh, in this situation. And I think uh, in our previous uh, conversation about uh, the West Philippine Sea, uh, look, let's look at it from the Chinese side muna. Kasi that's the only way we can reflect on okay, ano yung kailangan pa natin gawin. Okay. The, Chinese, you know, the Chinese has a maritime strategy that, okay, uh, that, that will uh, provide the, uh, the, the uh, operational design for their ambition, which is to be uh, to project itself not only in the northeast and south china seas even beyond okay to the mid pacific then going to the north to arctic ocean then to the indian ocean so there may strategy sila for that now um, the basic element of that to, to execute the strategy is what we call sea control it's a purely alfred thayer mehan concept okay very american yeah american british yeah because the Chinese have no in-house, uh, they, they don't have an in-house naval strategies. So they borrowed you American. So if you look at the interplay of what they're doing sa dagat, it's mehan. It's mehanian in nature. Kaya madaling, ano, if you understand mehan, you will understand the design. Kasi it fits. Okay? So it's sea control. It's an interplay of a uh, naval compo a naval component a, mar a merchant marine component basing is important logistics then you yung human resource okay uh, they don't have they, in previous decades they're not even going to see as a seamen tayo yung ano dominant eh. na yung layo na ngayon tapos i think i read somewhere uh, Today or yesterday, na they even surprised, surpassed. I think Greece in terms of yung, no, yung shipping, uh, commercial shipping, uh, as a flag, as a flag area. Okay, so they know they they studied, they studied the, uh, ano, they did their homework. Okay. So we're confronted with that situation, and dito, uh, to effect yung sea control, they have the navy, the coast guard, the militia, and yung yung occupied isles nil features nila yung mischief free subiri fire cross etc okay i think one of the problems naman natin is we tried to stop pipe things in stop pipe natin ko baka okay yan si militia yan si coast guard chinese coast guard then ito si navy but sa kanila they they work together okay. they work together so dito sa ayungin uh we see yung interplay. In fact, I think uh, based on the report of the Coast Guard, merong PLA Navy doon on the scene. 
as well. So, so you can see here that they, they have the Navy, the Coast Guard uh, up front, and then they have the militia. And they're all uh, supported by mischief from coming from mischief. So, sa atin naman, ano yung, ano yung, ano natin? What is ayungin to us? Okay. Uh, that's our mohon eh. Yung ano natin. Kung sa, if you own a real estate property, that's your mohon. That tells you that 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 is part of our uh, EZ. Okay. Pasok na pasok siya eh, sa exclusive economic zone na. Oh yeah. So, it's not even debatable eh. Na, na ating yun eh. Uh, so, you have this, uh, ano, uh, somebody na nag squat dun sa within our property trying to claim that with no legal with no legal papers to support it. Okay. Ang problema natin ganito eh. Uh, the only way we can hold on to that uh, piece of real estate is to make is to ensure that uh, we have a permanent presence. Kasi under challenge nga eh. To maintain the permanent presence. Ang problema natin, yung, yung Sierra Madre, it's, it's gonna go sometime. At some point, it's gonna go. I mean, rust. At some in, point, like five years, ten years. I mean, I mean, I just want to ask you, Admiral, what was the decision-making process? Be to, di ba? 1999. This is Arab. So, you know, what was, uh, what from what you know, what, what was the thinking, state of mind when we said, i-ground natin itong World War II, BRP, Sierra Madre, and then, Bahala na lang, no? And now the Chinese are claiming that uh, era promised them at some point to withdraw it. Like, what's going on there? And and obviously that was never sustainable. And given that that was never sustainable, why wasn't there any concerted effort from all the way until Aquino and Duterte to to make sure na meron tayong matinong platforms dyan, hindi lang yung rusted, tetanus-friendly kind of, uh, you know, Mad Max... Uh, Water world situation. I mean, what what what's going on there, uh, Admiral? Well, you have to understand. Nung unang din rounding, din round ya. Yung uh, Sierra Madre is still a uh, uh, basically a good a good platform pa. Okay, it's, it's still operating. Nung din round ya. Of course, over the decades, that get you rate. Okay. Now between at some point na hindi na siya habitable or medyo hindi na ideal and today na stress oh, yeah, baba. topic na yan yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have a cough kasi no, no problem please go ahead <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah, edit out mo naman yeah, edit out mo naman eh Anyway, nag-vacillate tayo eh. Kasi, uh, before I retired in 2019, ang projection namin, two years, medyo totally uninhabitable na siya. To totally deteriorated. So that's around 2019. So 2021 passed, okay pa naman. 2023 na yan eh. So mukhang matibay. Pwede pa. <laughs> Medyo, baka nung pandemic nakapagpahinga siya or I don't know what's going on. No. But, I mean, you, you cannot, ano, uh, at some point, it will become an, an inhabitable. So, ang solution talaga dyan is to either, it's not to repair that ship, but to, to actually set up a, a concrete facility behind the ship. Yes, exactly. Now, whether that is a uh, prefab or whatever, uh, that's a technical or a civil engineering solution that uh, needs to be. But that civil engineering solution will be implemented in a hostile, non-permissive environment. Exactly. So, Hindi ay yun yung parang nagpatayo ka ng bahay mo. It's entire issue then. Exactly. Exactly. So, number one, you need uh, to, to create you need to protect yung supply line between wherever it's coming from to a yung insure. Yung mobility corridor na yun, or supply corridor, you need to defend that. Pangalawa, uh, you need to pro protect the civil, in the combat engineers that gonna work on that facility. Kasi it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take months to finish whatever. Uh, so, then you need to look at 
how do I now deter yung ano, potential harassment? Okay. So, it, it, there are too many moving pieces for that. Eh. But at the end of the day, it will start with political will. Eh. It will start with political will. Okay. Okay. Risk Tuloy na natin niya. Eh. Oh, risk appetite to eh. Medyo so, China could respond aggressively. I mean, Admiral, just a question. Like, because some proposal right now is baka pwede tayong magpa-escort sa allies natin, particularly the U.S., considering the State Department made it very clear na any attack, even on the Philippine Coast Guard, will now invoke the Mutual Defense Treaty. So, if it's just us, kaya tayong bully ng China, babasahin lang nila yung materials natin. Panis na, hindi mo na pwede gamitin. But if there's a kind of a U.S. presence in the area, a patrol uh, vessel or a drone in the area, maybe magdadalawang isipang China. Because we know uh, about a decade ago, the Chinese, no, uh, during Aquino time, were trying to block even the, the supply of food and shelter <clears throat> and we had to drop it from the sky. no. But when the Ch Americans were over the horizon, medyo nagdadalawang isip yung China. So I completely disagree with some of the pro-China mouthpieces here na, oh, they have been so nice and all, kasi kayong may kasalanan, kasi pinipilit yung construction. No, no, there were really efforts to also block resupply of basic goods. Uh, but I think the Chinese realize that hintayin lang natin para ma mag-dismantle ito. Alis na rin sila. Sila nang squatter sa sarili nilang bakuran. Kukunin namin yan in a matter of time. But obviously, we're not going to be fool enough to wait for that moment. We have to come in. Do you think it's realistic uh, to have a kind of a joint or kind of an American or, or allied assistance in this process? Just as Carpia has already been talking about the Malaysian case, although I'm not sure it's, it's completely analogous, but... But do you think the Americans have an appetite for it? Or should we even ask for American assistance? Uh, the point being raised by Justice Carpio is actually uh, uh, the Malaysians did not ask for help. But the U.S. came there just the same. Okay. With, so there was no, With Australians, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was no, there was no public uh, agreement between the U.S. Australians and the Malaysians that they will be there to uh, protect yung, uh, yung survey. So, so the, the China, China cannot charge Malaysia with saying, bakit nyo pinatawag si U.S. and Australia? So, meron deniability. Meron deniability. Dun sa, ano yun. Uh, dito naman sa atin, no? uh, kasi number one, we did, we, we forgot to do something that would have made things not necessarily easier, but meron na tana tayong step one. Now we're we're going we're starting from step zero, eh? Because hindi tayo nagretain ng presence don. Okay, we do the the resupply mission, then we go back to base. Okay, and dapat don tinapatan nat yung presence ni don twenty four seven. Right. So yung yung foundation wala pa sana inuna pa yung basic steps para ngayon pwede ka na mag next level. And what you're saying is catch up talaga tayo on multiple fronts now. Yes, kasi 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 if we're going to step from step zero, anything we do if we go to step one, escalatory na kagad yung exactly. narrative doon eh. Okay? Kasi every if we do the actual construction, obviously escalatory in nature yon. Uh, it's gonna create waves at least on the Beijing side, okay. But since we we did not do yung step one, we're going to start from step zero. The mere reestablishing presence done is already escalatory from their narrative, okay. So um, the best dito is an incremental approach. Uh, we do the step one na. Uh, whenever we can. Meaning, tapatan na natin, if they have two Chinese Coast Guard vessels, then di, may dalawang Coast Guard vessels din tayo. Eh. Kung hindi natin kaya dalawa, di isa. At least merong isa. Uh, then, salita na lang. Okay. So, hindi yung parang iwanan natin. Kasi, ang labanan ng sea control kasi presence eh. Parang basketball yan eh. Di ba? Pag lumabas ka ng court, default yung game. Eh. Okay. The only way you can stay in the game is uh, if your players are still in the court. Eh, wala tayo sa labas, nasa labas tayo ng court eh. Okay. So, basically, we defaulted uh, we def uh, because uh, we were not present. So, ganun lang si control labanan na naval present ang basic doon. Yun nga eh. Uh, Which makes you wonder, I mean, Admiral, again, I'm not putting this on you, but we had both Aquino and Duterte, six years each of them. Why why not even the basic moves being done back in the day? Uh, 
Why are we waiting for Marco to <laughs> make the top choice now? Uh, eh, tapos na yung reclamation you know, China almost eh. 2013 pa yan, di ba? So, I'm just wondering bakit ganun? Parang medyo sublay. Kasi meron tayong arbitration case kay Pinoy. Meron tayong, I don't know, whatever kay Digong na military modernization to a certain degree. Brahmos Misal, whatever, which we'll discuss later on. But yung konting basics lang na minimension mo, yung mga just the foundations for some sort of platform building, it it doesn't seem to have been considered seriously well, by Digong and... Again, yep. You have to look at it from a temporal perspective. Eh? Uh, we don't. We simply don't have the ships then. That's why we have the modernization. Eh? Yes, think, yes, yes. And even even now, we still don't have enough. The sequence, talaga. Oh, sequence. Oh, problema kasi talaga. Before, problema yun, eh. uh, so even if we have a political will, kanon, you don't have the instruments to exert implement implement the political will. So may ganong problem. May ganong situation. Dun sa, ano. So, ano eh, that's, andun yun eh, wala tayo magagawa dun. Oof. So, I, I, it looks like it's like a conspiracy of, uh, or, I mean, conspiracy not in a, in Circum circum conspiracy of circumstances, right? Like talagang, uh, it's the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Of course, meron din tayo yung ano, Marawi. When I was there, uh, that was at the height of when I was in commanding naval forces well, during the Marawi Marawi uh, Marawi incident. Eh. So ang ang game plan ko lang naman doon is okay, I uh, as much as I want to exert yung ano natin yung yung uh, presence natin doon sa area na yun. Ang ang ano ko is I must not create problems here in Palawan that will distract distract AP resources to Marawi. Okay, kumbaga hold the line na lang ako rito uh, with whatever I have because the AFP's uh, focus was on the Marawi uh, Marawi siege. Okay, so ganun ganun yung ano, you have to you have to make some ano eh uh, calibration of your uh, tactics on the ground uh, with respect to yung what is happening in the other parts of the archipelago. So hindi ka naman parang uh, lone ranger doon sa isang area the best in the west karon pero nagke-create ka actually ng problem para sa headquarters kasi you you are trying to elevate you are trying to escalate something doon na may problemang malaki dito sa kabilang side so meron ganun ibabalance mo yun eh again i understand where coming from my thing though is it looks like there was huge scramble by china by i mean vietnam has also been doing its own mini -milita militarization and reclamation the malaysians have had a strong position the taiwan is by 2015, you already had President Ma inviting journalists and American experts <clears throat> to drink water from Ito Aba to kind of prove supposedly na ito ay totong self-sustaining island. So it's like everyone is doing something, pero tayo, nasa korte tayo, nasa... You know, I mean, no no offense to the fantastic job that Justice Carpi and others have been doing, but for me, the real fight was on the ground, and I, I'm sure and, and a kind of an operational person like you would have appreciated. But I also see where you're coming from in terms of not only we didn't have the vessels, we didn't also have the American commitment back then, right? It's really since later years of Trump and now under Biden that we see U.S. coming in and really publicly saying, we're going to be with you if there's going to be attack on your Coast Guard vessels or personnel in the South China Sea. So it, it, as I said, it looks like a conspiracy of circumstances and variables coming together, yeah. preventing us. But here we are, right? Marcos Jr., the president, expanded ETCA, to what degree is this also related with ETCA? Kasi ang basa ko rin dito is probably the Chinese will try to leverage their uh, their strategic high ground dyan sa West Philippine Sea to kind of bully us and say, well, if you want to have whatever you still are holding on to dito sa Kalayan group of islands, baka naman gusto mo reconsider yung ginagawa mo sa Cagayan and Isabela na medyo lumalapit at lumalapit dun sa next theater of potentially operation naman, which is Taiwan. Do you think that the Chinese may be doing this kind of issue linkage or trying to, as you said, di ba, pwede ka i-pressure dito para magkaroon ka ng concession or vulnerability dan. Do you think they're going to play these games or they're already playing this game? Okay. Dito, Richard, yan eh. Uh, uh, when you look at the terrain, you have to identify what terrains you can give up and what terrains you need to die for. Kasi you may not at some point in time have the resources to defend everything. Ika nga ni Frederick the Great, 
he who defends uh try to defend everything actually defends nothing nothing so dito we need to be realistic in terms of ano ngayon naman sa akin uh, uh, realistically all the things that we occupy in the Spratis group islands are not militarily defensible i mean realistically so ilan ba tayo eight ang hawak natin sa kalayan group of islands Yeah, and, and Ayungin is the ninth one. Yeah. Ninth with Ayungin, right? All the major labas kasi ang Ayungin, di ba? I'm talking about yung concentrate ng mga mm. kakata sa sprat list, di ba? So, nine in total. Uh, without undermining our position, although I'm sure the Chinese have all the information they need, just to, for the for the purpose of our audience, ano yung mga medyo alanganin yung, mga, yung iba na medyo secure? So, I can expect probably Panatak Shoal medyo... Solid na tayo dyan, relatively. But what about the others? Yung Iroquois Reef, for instance. Or yung mga iba, di ba? Uh, Juan Felipe Reef, for instance, right? Yung mga ganyan. Okay, if worse comes to worse, I will retreat from those areas. Okay, I mean, in a conflict like scenario. Like in an apocalyptic war situation. I, I will, ano. But remember, the reason why we are there, it's, it's our political mohon, eh. It's our political statement that uh, we are asserting our uh, sovereign rights uh, in the areas we now in see and our claim in those areas outside of our EZ. Okay? Uh, based on the fact that we historically occupied them uh, in the 70s. Okay? Uh, so that, those are our uh, political mohon. Eh. We're saying now uh, I put troops there or I put people there because... Uh, That is part of our, uh, that is part of the archipelago. Okay. But uh, from a purely military de- perspective, those are not defensible. Now, kasi kanina, you're trying to compare between that, tapos ite, kung maga di distract tayo and trade off yung what is happening in the Northern yeah, Philippines. Exactly. Northern Philippines is to die for. Okay. That's a to die for. Real Interesting. State. Interesting. Kasi, kasi, If Taiwan goes, we lose our buffer state. Exactly. Taiwan, Taiwan is our buffer state to China. If we lose Taiwan, we're going to have a World War II scenario. Remember, uh, Katabi na natin the, in China. They'll be staring at us through the Bashi correct. China, right? And Luzon correct. Strait. I mean, even class correct. land, next level land. Yeah. Remember World War II. The Philippines was attacked from Formosa. One of the one Taiwan. of the axes of attack was from from or Taiwan at the time. And how did they do that? Airfields si sure muna. They occupied airfields sa northern Philippines. Then they preposition yung aircraft nila doon. Then they attack Subic and Clark. Okay. So that's a to die for real estate. Interesting. Kaya, Interesting. Very interesting. If if you ask me to to make a yes, choice, like if you were the defense minister now, what will be your advice to Marcos Jr.? Don't give up on Etka on in the north, because there could be war in Taiwan. We cannot afford to have a weak soft spot underbelly there. Is that what you're saying, Admiral? <clears throat> the only way to curb China is to disrupt your strategy. Yeah, because right now it's not being disrupted. Okay. It, remember uh, when he announced yung Etka about a few months ago. Doon din nagkaroon ng uptick or uh, up exactly. tax ng tempo ng mga influence of laser, so, yeah, yung military laser, then now water cannon. So clearly may may ano eh, may one to one correspondence between the two. The timing seems to ne, be more than coin. Ne, what I mean is yung 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 oper- yung influence operations in terms of propaganda. Tumaas lalo. Yung, yeah, yung yeah of course. Of- That too, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, kasi we were ano eh, we were counting eh. Okay, nakaapat na webinar na sila, tayo wala pang counter. <laughs> so <laughs> para wag natin ano no, pangalanan, wag natin pangalanan. Ano, wala, wala, wala. Kami na lang okay. may ano, seminars kan, may mga ano pa, may mga Brazil BRICS currency, may mga ganyan ganyan ek ek. Yeah, so so anyway, I mean, we expected that. So, so they were trying to ano eh, they were trying to demonize yung EDGA. Eh. So makita Ganito kasi yan eh. Uh, madaling basahin ng Chinese eh. Ang, ang Chinese Communist Party. Kasi they're very vocal naman kung saan sila. Kung ano yung ayaw nila, that means they're hurting. They're not they're subtle. Hurting. They're not subtle eh. It, madali silang mabasahin. So, 
when they uh, they basically through the kitchen sink on EDGA, particularly doon sa Northern Philippines, uh, now you realize, okay, talagang importante yun. The more reason why we need to strengthen ourselves doon. Sa Navy naman kasi, we, we already established that years ago. That's why if you if you look back in uh, yung developments uh, in the previous years, we started slowly putting in Marines doon sa ano, to the northern Philippines. Precisely because we anticipated that eh, even if the rest of the government does not believe in us uh, at that time, so we did our job. Meaning we tried to put some presence there at least uh, kahit man lang parang uh, masabi na hindi naman kami nagtulang in terms of trying to uh, voice out our concern doon sa northern Philippines. Kasi that's our strategic strategically blind tayo ron sa Northern Philippines. Kasi we look at those areas as parang, ah, okay lang yan. Kasi problema naman dyan, bagyo lang. Ah, sabi, oo, oh, okay lang tayo dyan. Kasi tourist spot yan eh. Uh, walang mangyayari dyan. Okay. Kasi ang focus natin, nasa South. So that's our strategic blind spot. Okay. Kaya nga sinasabi natin ngayon, we don't have the luxury of a strategic rear. Kasi it's all over the place na. We, we have to look 360 degrees around us. Like before, we only need to look at two sides, the western side and the southern side. Ngayon, we have to check the north and we have to check the east. Uh, speaking of which, I think this, this really brings us to... But before that, I want to ask another question. What do you think about proposals of Pag-asa being put under expanded ETCA sites? Because... Clearly, AFP uh, and, and Pentagon said, hindi ito final list, pwede pa ma-expand yan. I, I know you're, you kind of answered that by saying, dapat mas focus natin yung mainland Luzon, what's happening with Taiwan. But do you think medyo a breach too far, a, a kind of a too much na yan, if, if we put uh, pag-asa under ETCA? Assuming the Americans will be open to it, which I'm quite doubt, doubtful of based on my own understanding. What do you think about that? Uh, number one, we can do it on our own naman eh, if we really want to. Okay. Then the next question is, ano ilalagay mo ron? I think we, uh, in the previous administration, uh, this we can criticize the previous administration if we want, but at least one of the positive uh, outcome nung was yung na-repair yung uh, air, airfield doon and uh, na naiayos yung uh, yung uh, birthing, birthing space for ships doon. Okay, so for that at least we can uh, upload it to the station so nice so so pag-asa is a, a good staging point now the question is anong gusto mo ilagay doon uh, do you want to put up a surveillance facility or do you want uh, to establish an aerodrome for uh, UAVs para they can do the patrol kasi in this uh, manned aircraft we will just use drones it depends now it doesn't have to be an EDCA site. We can do it on our own. But it, that has to be a decision point that we uh, we can, uh, even the armed forces or the, the government can decide on. Right. Kasi and, if, you put, if, if you make it EDCA, it becomes controversial. So, yeah. So, it looks like we have similar stuff. <coughs> so, but going back to the EDCAs in Cagayan and Isabela and all, I mean, again, without divulging some of the intelligence that both of us may have from our own contacts and all um how how much of because you can talk about edka light right which i think the chinese are trying to push us towards like tanggap nila magkakaroon ng edka but they just want some some sort of light version of edka whereby konti lang yung mga us troops hindi masyadong developing facilities but you can also think about a situation where by dun sa kagayan is <coughs> americans will be allowed and permitted to put hundreds if not thousands of troops Patriot missile systems, very advanced facilities. For you, what is the what is the optimal level of American military presence under EDCA terms, under Philippine supervision? Don Sakagan Isabella, considering what is emerging as a threat, not only in Taiwan, but also more and more in the Philippine Sea area. Okay, I think kasi mayroong misan nagkakaroon ng misconception. Although I do, I think we both understand what it is, no? but in 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 terms of sometimes the general public 
particular among the critics of EDCA. Mis- medyo nag hindi misa hindi ko alam kung sinasadya no. But EDCA is basically a facility within a Philippine camp. Philippine military camp. It's not a it's not an American base. Okay? That means if it's a facility we're talking of a a building or a warehouse or whatever. So it's not gonna it's not gonna be uh hosting that much uh US personnel per se. Uh kasi if you're talking of yung warm bodies, the mechanism for that would be BFA. Okay. The the EDCA uh is a mechanism for the equipment. So we're not talking of warm bodies, maybe we're looking at prepositioning of equipment. Uh, if you're familiar with yung, uh, yung the Cold War, no? there, there is such thing as ano, eh? a US NATO exercise, it's called the uh, reforger, exercise reforger, or uh, uh, exercise return of forces to Germany. Okay. Kasi yung, 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 armor, yung armor capability nila, naka-preposition na sa Germany. Then they have some US forces doon, US personnel. Yes. But yung bulk, bulk ng troops are in continental US pa, lilipad pa nila. Yeah. The objective is they have enough there to hold the line yung, yung provide the first line of defense to blunt. Uh, para so may time Soviet, for intervention. So, so you create uh, space for attack. intervention. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So, so the reforger exercise is to test yung gano'n sila kabilis i-rapidly deploy back to Germany. So, so nakikita ko parang gano'n din. Okay? You're not gonna see uh, preponderance of US personnel here, but maybe equipment. Yes. I, I I mean, speaking of equipment, are we looking at like Patreon missile systems? Are we looking at, you know, some of the huge drones that could be applied for really hybrid warfare because a Taiwan situation will be way more complex than what we're seeing in Ukraine, which in itself is, you know, quite something, right? I mean, this is so, going to be amphibious operations, m- multiple fronts across the Taiwan theater. Uh, if I were, I want to do, if I were the one to put up the list, I mean, I would, uh, I would uh, request that uh, they put in a uh, weapon system that can, uh, uh basically uh sink ships okay kind of like a, like submarine capability like underwater yeah. or, uh, or anti to... missile Where... system the Daifeng uh, DF systems kind of like like the Chinese DF systems oh uh kasi we we're, we're getting the Brahmos anti ship missile system diba so if they have a similar equipment capability that is the thing that i would uh, request them to preposition there okay kasi it's ano eh you have to leverage yung advantage ng geography natin to compensate for yung vulnerability natin or yung gaps natin our basic gap is we don't have the industrial capacity or maybe the financial resources to support a uh, a very large fleet of ships to protect our archipelago Okay. So we had to instead of Mehan, we go to Julian Corbett. Uh, okay. yeah. So Corbett you're saying is, uh, we can do to China what China is trying to do to the US, which is essentially asymmetric capability development, right? Kind our correct. own the access. <laughs> we will meet we will China China, right? We'll China in their own game, right? By by leveraging to, our geography in vis a vis Taiwan. Correct. We need to find a way to fight to develop the capability to fight cheaply. Right. Because if if we run an expensive, if we design our our strategy, in a very, tapos very expensive yung system, so you're not gonna be able to execute the strategy. Because you don't have the money to to back it up. Eh. So you have to find a way, and that is asymmetric. Find a cheaper solution to a problem that uh, uh you're confronted with. So. Kaya nga, when we were in the Navy, our solution namin was the Brahmos anti-ship missile system. Kasi that is the, ano eh, that is the asymmetric solution to the problem. Pero limited lang batteries natin, di ba? Mostly for West Command and most, so you think how many more batteries of Brahmos we should get? Should we go for the hypersonic missile down the road? The Mach 7, the, Mach 8? 
the limitation is is actually cost pa rin eh kasi if we ganito yan eh hindi lang naman kasi nang bibili nating equipment eh marami pa tayong ibang binibili eh kung ako sana ibuhos mo na lang muna doon okay kasi you're we're trying to buy uh kasi when you don't have enough money example you want to go to the local sari-sari store okay and you want to buy some things to yung mga goodies ba okay and you only have so much okay so you ano what uh, you you buy uh one of one of everything or just be, buy one item but many of many things so ganun yung ano dito eh it's, it's a resource management issue eh uh given finite financial resources why you just just focus on specific items so it, it's a, again it's a political will this uh, issue eh, or judgment call issue eh. uh you can easily acquire more batteries if need be uh but it's an opportunity cost that means you have to let go of some other things yeah i, I know it's it's this is where the, the bread and butter and and the kind of trade off issue comes into picture now let's go to the last part, which I think for me is my favorite, the best part, because I find you as a kindred spirit. And <clears throat> oh, I'm sick and tired of Philippines being called the small power. My goodness, we have as many Filipinos as Mexicans, and no one calls Mexico a small, small country. We are the 12 or 13 largest population in the world. We have top 30 biggest economies in the world. Even raw indicators or indices like the global firepower puts the Philippines in the top 35, 40. So Hindi tayo pipsqueak, right? Of course, we have many problems, many shortcomings, many budget issues, many kapalpakan, given the end. But, but clearly, I think both of us agree that it's time to speak about the Philippines in terms that is proportional uh, and I think respectful of where we are and where we should be, which is a middle power, you know? Not necessarily, you know, kind of a superpower that can dictate the terms or a regional superpower like China or even like Japan, but a country that kind of can hold its own and have certain degree of strategic autonomy and, and strategic uh, agency, no? Now, speaking of that, uh, of course, Admiral, in our previous conversation, we went to the geography of the Philippines and we said that for a very long time, probably our strategic culture or lack thereof is because of our relatively, I would say, hospitable, auspicious geography. We don't have land borders, so our vulnerability to external invasion is nowhere close to where Vietnam is or many continental countries are. I mean... If you're China, also you're worried about Russia to the north, Japan to the east, India to the west, right? South, you have Vietnam. We never had that. But but that insularity, relative insularity, and being protected by oceans perhaps created a certain degree of complacency for which we're paying the price. Nevertheless, now things are changing, right? So you mentioned Mahan, that ironically, an American strategist in the 19th century talking about how Britain... Uh, the British Empire, maritime empire system could inspire U.S. and therefore U.S. eventually conquering the Philippines also and expanding all the way to Hawaii and Asia. You're saying that the Chinese, of course, are also drawing from that. So this is not Admiral Zhonghe. That's not applicable to modern warfare. And Admiral Zhonghe was not even Han Chinese. He came from Central Asia and potentially even Persian by background based on careful research. But but going back to this, um, what you're saying is that actually now our geography is so challenging that might as well we have to step up. And Last time we were uh, together, we, we we look at this map of the first and second island chain, right? Which is quite troubling if you look at it. Like at the first look, it's like, oh, that's an interesting map. And it's like, wait, that's not very interesting. Like, because if you look at the Philippines, we're kind of, you know, smack right into the center of it, right? I mean, this this doesn't look very auspicious, right, Admiral? Mm -hmm. Look at the Philippines. Yes. They're yeah. exactly in the middle of the second and first island chain, which, by the way, demarcates what China wants to dominate for it to feel secure, for it to dominate Taiwan and its surrounding areas and push out America as far as possible. Because for the Chinese strategies, military strategies, you cannot really be a superpower unless you dominate your own region. And people like John Mersheimer, which many people are trying to cite nowadays for pro-Kremlin propaganda, actually he said that, that the U.S. should deny China the ability to dominate these areas. And that's where Philippines is extremely important. Uh, to 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 the West, to America, but also important for our you know on or our, on our own terms, right? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this first and second island chain and why this should be a wake up call and why this should not be a cause for depression or 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 uh, fatalism, but instead a, an inspiration for us to get the ball rolling? Well, if it doesn't inspire us, at least it should uh, Shock inspire us. fear. 
inspire fear or shock and awe. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So, dito kasi, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think the initial part of their maritime ambition or maritime strategy is to assert or establish sea control within the first island chain. Kasi that would create a strategic buffer. Kasi uh, over the centuries, they've already established buffers doon sa landward side nila. Eh. Okay, to the north, to the uh, to the west, and to the east. So, sa, sa south, sa southern part, that's Tibet. Yeah, they occupied Tibet. Eh. That provides them the buffer. They occupied Xinjiang. Xinjiang is their westernmost uh, province. So, they're heavily uh, positioned there. Okay, to the point na they're trying to change the culture of the yung population dun sa Xinjiang. Then of course, the north, it has a desert. Okay, so, protected sila. Ang weakest na lang nila yung east coast. Eh. And, and one thing that uh, makes the east coast important to the Chinese is yung 10 provinces that comprise your east coast, pag uh, in-aggregate mo yung GDP nun, tapos... Yes, like 90% yeah. of the GDP. Yes, something like that, yeah. Uh, uh, ano siya? Uh, gawin mo siya, kumaga mentally, sabi mo, okay, walay natin siya sa China. That, those 10 provinces will become the third highest GDP in the world. Okay. Ganon siya ka, ganon siya ka importante. So, they need to protect that. Okay. So, the solution talaga nila is uh, whether it's, uh, whether you call it the nine dash line or whatever. Uh, I mean, any self-respecting major power like China uh, will, will find a way to actually have to uh, secure yung North, East, and South China Sea. And my strategic so, depth. And to have strategic depth. Yep. Yeah. Correct. So, from a, from an uh, ano, objective point of view, I can understand the strategy behind it. It's logical. Eh? Okay. And it's also logical that they would do their United Front Works effort or influence operations dito sa South Korea, sa Japan, sa Taiwan, sa atin, uh, Malaysia, or Indonesia. Kasi you want these countries, if Number one, if I can be, they can be my friends, better. But if they're not my friends, at least I destabilize them to the point that they, they will not be able to threaten me. Right. Okay. So, yun lang naman ang option ko. So, I mean, I do understand from their perspective the logic of their strategy uh, from a major power perspective. Okay. So, that's why we also need to be rational in the way we approach the you know, you know, we, we need to understand where they're coming from. Exactly. We shouldn't demonize them. They're, they're, they're a great power that has an interest in protecting its own perimeters, right? And has a sense mm -hmm. of ambition and sense of size and place. But obviously, mm -hmm. the fact that China is not a democracy and an authoritarian system with some of the horrible things mm -hmm. happening in Xinjiang perhaps makes it easier for us to demonize China. But you're absolutely right. We have to understand it from a patriot Chinese defense strategy standpoint. Hindi ka hindi ka opo lang waiting for us to choke your you know your your supply lines and all if if push comes to shove right so so see we are trying to be objective but not being influence operations right like this is how you right. do it yeah, yeah yeah and you have to understand yung ano niya yung uh, resource ano rin siya uh, net importer din siya of resources eh. hindi naman sa hindi naman lahat ng resources available sa China so not, that's why they need to reach out they 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 need to reach out to Latin America for resources. They need to reach out to Africa for resources. Middle East, of course, for the oil. They need to reach out to Europe for te technology. Okay, and of course to the US for technology. So, lahat yon may yung nagi interplay yung uh, how it positions itself. Eh. So if we understand that, then the next question is okay, where do I position myself? Okay, ako si Pilipinas, where now do I position myself? This would be that kind of major power in my neighborhood. Uh, you don't know. So, there is one point of view, and I think that's what the other, our other friends are uh, trying to point out. Is, Banwago na lang tayo sa kanila. <laughs> okay. Kasi that's less stressful on our part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, mukhang China to, doon na tayo, unahin na natin. <laughs> oh. If you, if you surrender to them earlier, you'll get better terms. Parang ganun yung idea. Oh, parang ganun. Uh, Which I is mean, not that, that, necessarily hating the Philippines. It's just that it's just uber pragmatic. Uh, but obviously, I question the premise, right? But 
Siguro okay. kanya nang inisip ng iba, di ba? Banwagon na tayo sa China kasi yun ang inevitable superpower. Which obviously it's questionable. Now sorry for for cutting you there because I, that's what Kosikan Bilhar and a lot of Singaporean friends would say is that China wants you to think that they're the inevitable future. So ngayon pa lang, luminya ka na, di ba? Para you get the best terms. Oh. Actually, if you look at the numbers, their their population is shrinking, their economy is in trouble. There's nothing inevitable about China becoming number one by by all indications. But never mind. But we're still talking about you know China's way of looking at. Okay. So next question is yun na, yung next question ko doon is, ako si Pilipinas ngayon, how do I position myself? Uh, ito yung geopolitical realities ko ngayon. So, it goes back to ano yung interest mo? Okay. Uh, ano yung para sa Pilipinas? Yeah. So, and I think that transitions are now to what you're trying to point out of in terms of uh, is the Philippines uh, willing to accept that it's a middle power or not? So, Admiral, speaking of the Philippines, I mean, we're hoping to close on this. I know, sorry, I, I made you too tired. Um, how can the Philippines become the best version of itself in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? What are the top five things we have to do? Uh, if, if there are like five ingredients to the Philippines being a self-respecting middle-sized power in the Indo-Pacific, what would, would those five elements be? Just for heuristic purposes, simplify natin. Sabi natin, what are the five key things we have to focus on? From Marcus Jr. in the next five years, but also for the next two administration after Marcus Jr., whoever they're going to be. What is going to be our 10 to 20 year uh, strategic plan? Number one, Seguro, first and foremost, we need to take care of our people. Yun muna. Kasi that's the basic ingredient. One of the reasons why uh, surprisingly, mataas tayo sa military power index is because of our military age population. Our young population. Yung demographic uh, summer natin. Yung, demogra uh, uh, yung demographics natin is our, one of our other, uh, advantages. Both from an economic perspective and a military perspective. Okay, we need to take care of our population. Okay. So that means, ano yun? Uh, public health, public education. Okay. Kasi, of course, uh, if we do those basic things, then we, we have the population base to do great things. Okay. Uh, so, so I think that takes care of two, public health, public education. Paratlo uh, would be, and uh, sana ma-improve natin yung governance system natin, but that's actually... Medyo mahirap gawin yun eh. Okay. Sa sana. But un unless we do that, and uh, that's going to be difficult. When you say uh, go, does this mean more democratic or more like in terms of rule of law and management of our resources? What do we mean realistically? I mean, we're not going to be Norway, New Zealand in the next 10 to 15 years. I think let's be realistic about that. But with the current trend lines, what is the best minimum version we can look at as a way to make the Philippines a decent middle power? Siguro, ano, uh, we need to accept yung the realities ng domestic politics natin in terms of the source of leaders where they're coming from. Exactly. Uh, find, find a way to work with those sources of leadership. I mean, that, uh, ano, far for the cause, uh, that's nothing you cannot do. You cannot do anything about it. So, uh, ano pa rin yan, eh? it's, it's a, uh, not to get connected kumbaga. rather than rather than uh, just criticize uh, ano, to connect to them kasi at some point I think uh, ano naman eh, meron tayong makikita tayong ano, uh, ways of ano, eh, yung we can agree on okay. uh, mag magbabalance din yung ano uh, magbabalance out din yan. Uh, hopefully, no? cross, your, cross your fingers. Magbabalance out din yan. So that's public health, public education. Uh, Good governance. governance. Good, Good governance. governance. Okay. So, okay. so I think with these three, okay ka na eh. Kasi the rest will follow eh. Mm. The rest but will tactically follow. speaking, right? Sorry, uh, Admiral. Okay, I, I get those big points. I think all of us could agree that's important for everything, right? To deal with climate change, to deal with, I don't know, effects of mm. the virus, effects of artificial intelligence. But now more military-wise, like 
let's say realistically we have three to five billion dollars to spare in the next decade or so, which is not actually that much if, if you look at it, considering our neighbors are spending tens of billions every year. Um, what are the constellation or package of weapon systems that we can look at? So I think you already implied we need more of Brahmos, right? So which makes India a very important partner. Is there like a squadron or two of fighter jets that we need or uh, naval fighter jets or warships? What are we looking at? Do we, do we need a submarine for that matter, which is of course a very expensive thing, a billion dollar engagement at the very least? Mm. Uh, okay. Number one, for that, we need to appreciate our geography better. Because we need to find a way for, for you to, before you go into weapon systems, you need to understand how your geography, how to leverage on geography muna. Because that dictates what weapon system are fit for that. The now, since we are, yeah. Since we are an archipelago in the middle of a geopolitical cold zone, okay, basically in the middle of it. So you're looking at, as I said earlier, 360 degrees. But uh, we also need to be able to protect your access ways to our archipelago. And those are the seven sea lines of communication, archipelagic straits. Okay, so in terms of weapon system, leveraging archipelago, your your geography, of course, yung nga, yung asymmetric solution, yung Brahmos. Uh, we may need to look at unmanned systems instead of manned systems. So drones uh, are important for you? Drones will be important? Yes. Uh, uh, I will give you an example yung sa, sa Ukraine-Russian conflict. The virtually non-existent Ukraine Navy was able to sink Russian ships okay, using drones. Okay. So, uh, That is also one way of uh, that's also an asymmetric solution. Because drones are cheaper. Okay. Uh, if you buy a ship to counter one ship, which is a symmetric solution, but you don't have enough money for that. And considering that the, your adversary has an industrial capacity that can build ships like rabbits. Okay. So in the Mukaya match yon. So you need to look at other uh, items. So drones would be either for both for uh, for the Air Force and the Navy, maybe drones would be a good thing. Because uh, for surveillance and for uh, uh, armed, armed drones. Then we need to look also at yung cyber. Because okay. that cyber is something we are good at. Okay. But we're not investing so much because we're, inve we're invested in other things, in legacy capabilities that are counterinsurgency. So I think uh, if you're a business concern, you need to look at, okay, hindi na kumikita to, dapat to, let go na. Or maybe ito, kaunti na lang yung nakikinabang dyan. Pwede na sigurong bawasan natin yung ano natin. Uh, we need to make those, ano eh, yung strategic choices in terms of resource management. Very critical yun. Kasi we're not talking, talking of weapon systems, pati yung force structure eh. Yung, ano yung, yung forma ng, ano ko, forma ng uh, armed forces ko in the future? Is it infantry-based or mechanic me, uh, mechanized-based? Okay. Let's say we're going to buy uh, armor capability, armor capabilities. But you have to look at yung threat scenario natin. Are we expecting an invasion uh, of the archipelago that will later on involve, uh, let's say, tanks from the other side. Kasi kung wala naman, so what, why are we developing this kind of area? Okay. Then, uh, sa defense system of management, which is a mechanism for actually uh, looking at acquisitions, we need to also look at yung ano, eliminate redundancies. Because over the years, we're buying things that have the same or similar capabilities. So if you want to uh, go for, uh, uh, expand yung, uh, with limited resources, you try to buy to buy properly rather than buy everything. So you look at first, yung, okay, ano ba yung dodoble? Bawasan ko na lang yan. Okay. So those type of things. Yeah. 
thank you very much for this. I mean, the reason why I asked this, uh, Admiral, because there was this very interesting study uh, by the Center for New American Security back in 2012. No, the title is "Defending the Philippines' Military Modernization and Challenges Ahead." It, just to summarize it, essentially, it was saying with a billion or two dollars alone. Uh, again, it might sound a lot to us, but actually, that's nothing in, in in defense spending for a lot of our neighbors. You can get the kind of a perfect Justice League combination of, let's say, two modern warship, let's say, kind of a mini submarine, and then some sort of missile system, and that might give you the porcupine capability or poison shrimp capability. Of course, a lot has changed since 2012, but my sense is the kind of a modified, uh, upgraded uh, or updated version of that study perhaps still makes sense as now we move kind of into the third phase of AFP modernization because that study got my, a lot of my attention because we always knew there's no way we can match you know, uh, the, the, the Chinese or forget about the Chinese, not even the Singaporeans, right? But so but it was how to modernize the Philippines or give us minimum credible defense. Not the man on the chip, but like the, the Sulit Ilocano way of doing it. So as an Ilocano, I love that kind of study, right? And I was thinking maybe we need a new version of that for 2023, 2024. Um, that's why I ask you this question, like on the chip with a billion or two dollar, like what is a realistic combination of things we can look at? So I, that's why I appreciate your your intervention. But the last thing, uh, yeah, you want to say that, <coughs> Siguro ano, no? if you want to be, if you don't want to go cheap. Ang uunahin ko is yung to sulit, build up our industry. Oh, sulit version. Industrial capacity mo natin. Domestic industrial capacity. Kasi if you don't have that uh if, and you rely on our partners or allies for things. At some point magkakaroon ka ng supply management issue, supply chain issue. So, supply chain issue become a problem during the pandemic. It's also a problem in Ukraine. So, industrial capacity. Yeah, because you need maintenance, you need, you know what I'm saying, right? The backward linkages and all. And usually that's what I hear excuse from Americans. And they say, oh, we cannot give you the F-16 fighters or F-18 fighters, etc. Because you can maintain it, right? And we know that that's a concern also raised with some of the Arab uh, partners of US when they were asking for, I don't know, F-35 <laughs> fighters or some of the more advanced weaponries. Aside from, of course, the Israel aspect and all, which is a totally different episode. Now, last thing, uh, dun sa apat, siguro pwede natin dagdag sa lima, no? Do we need some sort of a, a young Turk version, a kind of a group of strategists who push the Philippines in the right direction, post-partisan, non-partisan, you know, a kind of patriotic, uh, forward-looking kind of group of people with, in, within and outside the government, like essentially kind of the uh, the, the 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 elder statesman or not necessarily elderly like you get what i'm saying like kind of a modernizing strategic movement in the philippines do you think that that would be important if yes, not is, Mahan, but, Mahan of our own yeah but you need yeah, sorry <clears throat> you need an incubator for that no now whatever that what shape or form that incubator is it could be academe or it can be a government institution i don't know but you need to have, to have that incubator for strategic culture to flourish. Uh, para yung ano yung yung those that are become become part of that institution or, or part of that incubator. If you let them go later on, they will they will be in private sector, in government, in industry, in academia, and they don't have to think the same way. But at least you you set them in the direction of okay, looking beyond yung ano yung limitations that we have to work with in the, our current or previous generations okay. na masyadong uh, inward looking or medyo uh, lacks confidence. Okay. Kasi middle poweredness is also you have to be confident. Okay. I was thinking something like a, speaking of Oppenheimer, right? Kind of like an institute for advanced study, right? You know what I'm saying? Like in one of the top universities, could be you guys in Ateneo or in UP or whatever, or it could be one of the BGC campus, Parameja, away from everyone. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you bring physicists there, you bring environmental <clears throat> scientists, you bring naval experts, you meet political scientists, you know what I'm saying? Like a 20, 30 group of people, senior, rising star. I think that's what we need, no? And you need at least one kind of regular director for five to 10 years, right? To kind of build this group, no? So uh, for mm -hmm. me, I think that will be a very important ingredient, a kind of a incubator for a middle power strategic vision and strategic culture for the Philippines and kind of a model of an institute for advanced study. I think that's really 
would be nice. An office in DGC. So just to throw the idea out, baka nakikinig si Gibo or nakikinig yung president ng UP Ateneo. But I just I thought, uh, Admiral, we need more of that and then we can make podcasts there every day maybe. <laughs> Second one, <laughs> free aspect. Like the nitty gritty technical issues, environmental science aspect. I can already think of the list of 10, 15 people. I mean, right off the bat, no. But I'm sure... It, that's something uh, that that we can keep in mind. Marami salamat, uh, uh, Admiral. Thank you so much, retired Admiral Ong, for for your fantastic uh, interventions. I I look forward to joining you more on the record because off the record we're always together in 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 panels and discussions. Uh, so thank you so much, Admiral. Is there something you want to add uh, that for our audience? A lot of them are young. A lot of them are progressive. Is there something you want to tell them? Should, leave the Philippines or love the Philippines? <laughs> Well, uh, I think at the end of the day, you know, para sa bayan yan, you have to love the Philippines. Okay. Uh, for for the good or for the bad. Don't give up too easily. Uh, uh, kung ikaw nga sa military, hold the line ka muna. Uh, kaya pa natin yan. Okay. Don't, go, don't give up pa yan. May mga challenges pa. <laughs> like mamaya na kayo mag-give up kasi wala pa yung mga totoong challenges. Kumbaga. Thank you so much, Admiral. God bless. Thank you very much and I hope we can Continue this conversation in different platforms. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Rizzo. God bless. Thank Pagpahinga you, Rizzo. Pagpahinga na kayo. Medyo alam ko, napagot na kayo. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. Thank you.